the very different disciplines of art and science have come together on a major new conservation project. A team from the University of Melbourne is working to understand how modern artworks age and how to best protect them for the future. This um, project that we're involved with, which is very, very exciting, we have um, partners from across Europe, um, America, uh, Asia and Australia. So we have the Getty, the Tate, um, institutions in Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, and then most of the state um, galleries across Australia. And then we have um, four universities. What we're doing with this project is looking at use of materials in the 20th century, and it's challenging because artists used materials that were never um, made for art making purposes. For example, Sidney Nolan started using house paint, Ripland paint in the 1940s. That throws up all sorts of problems for conservators about how these works are responding and behaving, but more importantly, how we best look after them. The problem with artists picking up a lot of the materials that were made in the 20th century is that these materials were not necessarily made for art making practice. So they're behaving in ways that we can't really predict. For example, um, they'll fade, they'll crack, they'll delaminate, they'll um, bubble. The other aspect is to help artists make choices in line with what they want to do aesthetically. So we've got a, an education program, we've got a website to take information back to the artists. So the science is informing the art, at the same time the art's informing the science. During the 20th century, artists moved away from oil paints to synthetics, such as PVA and acrylics. Their chemistry is not very well understood, so to help conservators, researchers are learning more about how modern paints perform over time at the molecular level. Paint can degrade through a number of mechanisms that can involve free radicals. Uh, and uh, free radicals are, of course, reactive molecules that are formed when uh, molecules lose an electron and they spend a lot of their time trying to find a mate for the unpaired electron. And so oxygen, for example, is a, is a common free radical uh, that uh, is found in the atmosphere. Free radicals can attack uh, the paint and in doing so it can cause the paint to flake. It can cause the uh, pigments in the paint or the colour of the paint uh, to fade uh, and it can cause the paint itself to peel off the canvas that it's connected to. The work in the Free Radical Centre has developed new technology that can detect uh, free radical damage to materials, including paint. Uh, we're looking at formulating paints uh, from recipes that were back in the 50s. We're also looking at using modern paints. Uh, we're including our new fluorescence technology to detect degradation of these paints. And we're also artificially ageing them in uh, equipment that we have here in the laboratory. And all of this will give conservators uh, an idea of how to handle and treat failing objects from this era. We hope that the results of this work will inform paint manufacturers into how to produce better quality paints for artists to use in the future. And this is really exciting because artists will then be able to produce paintings that will last longer for the general public to enjoy.